Greetings viewers and welcome to today's info sharing snippet where we'll be covering the segmented inventory feature within Sage Children Evolution. Now within Sage Children Evolution you can create normal items as well as segmented inventory items. Now segmented inventory items allows you to classify items which perhaps are similar into different segments and then use those segments to categorize your items. Let's see exactly how to implement segmented inventory within a Sage Trinidad Evolution database. So firstly, we would need to go through to our inventory module and we would need to go to maintenance inventory defaults. Right, under inventory defaults, there's a tab for segmented inventory and we need to implement the use segmented inventory feature. And as you can see, um, we can implement up to seven inventory segments within the database. And we can also have within a database have standard inventory items together with the segmented inventory items as well within your inventory range of items. Right, so I've implemented the use segments to feature and we'll implement or specify those segments after we've created them. So, we can complete that option and now I'm simply going to go and exit and log off so that we can implement those relevant inventory segments within our database. Right, we'll just wait for the exit and log off process to complete and there we go. Just log in once again. Right, so what you'll notice is that when we go to inventory maintenance, we've got now a section for inventory segments. And really segment inventory is based on a three tier structure. So we first we've got our segment types. We then have our segment groups, which are linked to the types, and then our segment values, which are in turn linked to our segment groups. Right, so let's just start off with firstly our segment types, which is the first level of our tier. And in this instance, we're going to use an example of a clothing shop, which sort of specializes in jeans. So within our jeans types, we're going to have three options there. And we're going to say, for example, um, size. We'll then have color. And we'll then have style. Right, so there we go. We've got our first three segment types. As I say, you can obviously implement the different types based on your categorization of your stock items, etc. Right, so we've set up our types. Next, we have our groups. So the groups will then be linked to our types. And if I go add our groups here, we're going to use, for example, gene color. And we're then going to go link them to the top color. We're then going to use gene style and link that to our style. And then we're going to have our gene size and link that to our top size. Right, so we've got those three options. And now finally, we need to go specify our values. So the values are really the permutations that we could have with this particular categorization of stock items. And the values are going to in turn be linked to our groups. So I'm going to add, start adding my values here. And for example, we're going to have under the color, we can have, for example, dark blue. And And we can link that to the group being color. We're then going to have, for example, light blue. And 
link that to the color group. And then we could have, for example, black. and link that to our color. Right, so those are the three values that we could possibly have within our range of items, which form part of the color group. I'm then gonna go on, for example, let's just say, for example, our size. So for example, we can have 30, and we can have size 13. And we're gonna be linking that to the size. And then use 32. and a size 34. And finally, we're going to set up our different values for style. So I can, for example, say, um, We're going to be linking that to our star. You can then have skinny. And we can then use a relaxed fit for some of those items. And link that to our group being star. Right, so firstly, we set up our types, which are different options. So, for example, we've got a garment in a specific size, it could be a specific color and a specific style. We then have our groups, and they can be classified into, once again, the color of the item, the size, as well as the style. And then finally, the values being all the possible values that you could use when describing or specifically categorizing that item. So, in this case, we've got our three types of colors, three sizes, and also the three types of styles we're going to be making use of. Now, before we continue, I'm just going to go back to my maintenance and uh, inventory defaults. And we now need to just go specify the different segments that we're going to be using. In this instance, we're specifying three segments. And so back under maintenance, inventory, Default segment inventory, I'm going to firstly use, for example, you said it's going to be size, then color, and then style. So first it's going to be categorized by the size, then the color, and then the style. And obviously you could obviously add more than or multiple up, up into seven segments with regards to your segmented inventory types. Right, so there we go. Now we need to go specify or create the stock items based on the various segments. And then we're going to be doing under inventory maintenance, inventory items. And you see within this database, we've got a range of standard items. I'm now going to go create an item based on the segments that I've set up. So you'll notice is that on the inventory maintenance screen, we've got a segmented item option. So I'm going to say, for example, And I'm going to mark this item as being a segmented item. So there we go, mark that. And as you see, we've now got the ability to create the item based on the segmented structure. So I'm gonna go click on the icon. And we now got the ability to specify the size, color, and group. So I'm gonna say, for example, the size is going to be size 30, and the color is going to be light blue. And under style, we're going to go create one, for example, relaxed fit. So I'm going to go create the item based on those particular segments. Next, and there's my item. So once again, we've got the description, we've got the size, the color, and also the style, and finish. Right, so I'm just going to OK there, and you'll see that we now have the item available. So we go back into the item, we've got the details there. So once again, there's a description, size, color, and style. 
And then obviously we can add additional descriptions there in the description one, two, and three field. Right, so you can imagine that perhaps if you've got maybe a large number of stock items divided into segments that it may take quite a considerable amount of time to create these items individually. So therefore we've got an automated section or automated option that allows you to create multiple segments simultaneously. So back to adding an inventory item, and I'm now going to create a new item, but I'm going to use the automated method to create these items. So I'm going to once again mark it as a segmented item. And I'm then going to use click on the icon. And now I'm just going to say, for example, the size, the color, and the style. And next. And it's automatically going to go create all the items that fit in that particular segment. So now I've got my jeans, my item code, all those various options, all the sizes, and all the possible permutations. Right, so there we go. I'm saying finish. And OK to that. It tells me that it's automatically going to go create all of those stock items simultaneously. So there I've got my my item code, all the possible sizes, the possible colors, and the possible styles created in a matter of seconds. And there we go. And if we now look at our options, we we'll see that we've got our items there. And based on all the options there, we now got all those items created simultaneously. And if you just go, if you look, that was an item that we created manually, got the details there, and we then have the other items which you created simultaneously. So as you can see, you can go create a whole range of segmented items simply by using the application, specifying the permutation that you want to make use of, the segments to be created, and the system will then create those items automatically for you. Right, then let's just go through to our transactions. So I'm just going to go through, for example, to inventory transactions, and I'm going to be processing a GRV to bring in items or the segmented items. And it really is a case of, once again, normal process specifying the supplier. And you'll notice is that as soon as I specify the item on my document lines, I've now got a specific or additional filter here where I can simply go and look and search for those segmented items. So for example, I can say jeans two, all the jeans two there. And once again, I can be a bit more specific. So say for example, I can say maybe only size 34. And if so, so for example, um, maybe um, dark blue. And once again, I've got details there about the different styles. As you can see, I can be really specific about my filtering options when it comes to segmented inventory. Select my item, and then simply a case to specify the quantity and the value as per normal, and process the transaction, receive the goods, etc. So we've got the ability once again to specify. We've got a range of our normal stock items. But also we can then go and filter and go find the relevant segmented inventory items on when looking at and searching for those particular items. Right, there we go, specify the item. And it's simply a case of now going to go process the transaction. Right, process the invoice. And we can then go and view the supply invoice. Right, so there's my supply invoice. The layout remains the same. We've now just specified the relevant details of our segment inventory item, and the transaction has been completed. So 
The filtering option is applicable to all, for example, documents where lookup field is required, where we can go and look up and search for a segmented inventory item. If we then go to our reports under inventory, so for example, we want to see maybe our levels, uh, you'll see that our reports all have segment filters, so we can obviously go search for our normal items. However, we can go a step further and go to our segment filters tab there, and from there, we can simply go and check for the details, our groups, our values, etc., and filter accordingly. Right, we specified our details there, and we can then go view information. So as you can see, we've got a segment or specialized or additional segment filter optional inventory reports, which we can then go and filter based on the information we want to look at, and then obviously preview the reports as required. So as you can see, segment inventory really allows you to create inventory items based on items which maybe have similar characteristics, incorporate them into your inventory holding, and then process transactions as per normal. And then just basically having up to seven segments that can be set up for inventory, and importantly setting up your types, which are going to be the types, or for example, the top level of your segmented structure. Then next would come your groups, which are then linked to the types, and the values being all the possible values that you could have with regards to those inventory items, which are in then in turn linked to inventory groups. So really a very useful way to categorize your items, specifically if you have a stock holding where items have got similar characteristics, you can certainly implement inventory or segment inventory, as well as having normal stock items within one database. Thank you for watching our presentation today. It's over and out for me and goodbye.